Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. So it is officially December, even though you probably can't tell because here in Alabama, it is still 80 degrees most days. It's actually a little overcast today, so it's more like 70. Either way, it's still warm down here. Not hot, but warm. I'm hoping we get a little bit of cold weather at least the end of December, early January. But basically, everything's happy. So many things are still growing in the garden, more than I was expecting, but less than I'd like. Either way, the pansies are doing fabulous. The cabbages, the ranunculus carbs we planted are coming up. I just did a big fall cleanup video where I cut back the um, pintas, the angelonia, the veronica, um, foxgloves, anything that will come back next year, but is dead now. So a lot of those things like the angelonia and the um, pintas are technically annuals, but in our zone, we're at eight feet, we're 30 minutes from Florida. A lot of those things will come back for us, even though technically they're only perennials in zone nine. We're right on the edge. So like pintas, these are usually annuals. They were tagged as annuals. There are perennial pintas, but these were annuals. And you can see there's still plenty of green after cutting off the dead. And I mean, this little guy is still trying to bloom. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave those. I think I'll put them somewhere a little more protected, but I just cut them back. I want to make sure they still get rain when it rains. So I'll put them somewhere where the bases at least are warmer since they're in pots and not in the ground. The pintas are on like this tree, still sending up green leafy growth. So I think they might come back next year. Either way, point of that rant is that I just did a big fall cleanup, put that video out last week. And in that video, that was about maybe four days ago, the ranunculus corns that we planted were not up. I walked around today just to see what was up in the garden for this tour. And after four days, the ranunculus corns, like you'll see, there's a good two, three inches of growth on most of them. I am so excited. Now we still don't know if they're going to bloom for us. These are ones I got off Amazon. They were $15 for 25. So they were a great price. And I am hoping that they bloom, but I would say at least half of them are up. So I'll show you, we'll go take a look, show you everything that's working, show you everything that's gone to sleep. Um, we're not going to go all the way around by the shed because everything over there is asleep, but I'll show you the pretty part and what my garden looks like in December. Let's go. Biddy, where'd you go? Biddy. Hey, this is why those never grow. Come out here. Come on. She thinks that's a patch. It's not a patch, Biddy. All right, so if we start right off the porch, our container, our summer containers, almost everything has gone down but the lantana is still blooming. I mean, cut it back in the spring if it's still alive so we can put out new blooms because as you can see, it's getting very long and leggy. But so far, you know, as long as it's blooming, I'll leave it because the butterflies are still loving it. Then we have this little area. My pretty cotton candy pansies are beautiful. The lamb's ear, you can see. Some of the new irises I planted last year are starting, starting to come up. That'll be exciting. I'm hoping for, I planted them starting here, winding all the way back in here. So hoping for some tall, pretty iris in the back here. My bitty plant. The mums won't bloom again until next season. And I'm trying you saw me, I divided and planted lamb's ear all throughout here to try to get this side to be as big and pretty as this side. But obviously, Biddy, my lamb's ear culprit, I, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get it to work. I might have to plant something to like keep her out of there. Little bit, what did I just say? Get out of the lamb's ear. 
She likes to go under the porch to relax, but guess what? There's a opening right back here. See, pea gravel. You can go back there. Stop going through the lambs here, Biddy. All right, let's keep going. So my cabbages here are getting eaten by something. Do y'all know what this is? What kind of damage? I spray them with BT, will that help? Should I pull those eaten leaves off the bottom? The little ones seem to be fine. They must not taste as good, but especially this one. I've never planted ornamental kales or cabbages before, so y'all have any plans or help, let me know. And then this is where I started to see the ranunculus coming up. I had eight extra, so I popped them right behind these kales or cabbages. I, I like to fill this whole area back in here with foxglove in the spring. So even though it looks stupid, I'm not leaving, not planting anything here. That'll all be foxglove. You can see there's some more iris back here. And then we'll have a little row of ranunculus before the pansies. But right here, green growth. I'll show you a close up right behind me. Those are the first ranunculuses that I saw yesterday. I was like, oh my God, what is that? Ranunculus, ranunculus. And actually, I see plenty of weeds too, but um, back in here, some little iris tips coming up, which is very exciting because I planted a whole row right in front of this Nandina of about five that I thought for sure were dead bulbs that I'd gotten and left on the porch and were like withered away to die. So if even one of those comes up, I'll be happy because if even one comes up, then they will continue to spread in that area. Won't be as good as five, but you know, one alive will multiply. So I do, I think I need to come in and help this lamb's ear a little. He's looking a little funky. But you can see down in here, some of these foxgloves are still alive from last year. Foxgloves, of course, are biannual. So those will come up big and beautiful this year. And then I have, I have a whole bunch of the F1 foxglove babies growing in milk jugs. These are iris and I have glads back here as well from last year. So it's just the ones right over here that are new for this year. So hopefully more iris and glads. Cut back all the angelonia and uh, it's usually an annual, but it always comes, well always this, it came back one year. And uh, this is a vinca, don't need that. This is a vinca, don't need that. This is a weed, don't need that. But all of this new growth right in here, that is Angelonia, my friends. All these buds, by next year, they will be big and pretty again. They look so pretty. These are the blue and white angel faced ones. So they come up three to four feet around my little wind chimes. And then we have this corner. So surprisingly, the three new Gara I planted look fabulous. Like they're still flowering fabulous. Look at this. It's December, Gara. It's December. I love it so much. This rose I thought was going to take up this whole corner, but it's a climber, not a spreader. The tag was wrong. So whatever. I'm training it up onto my messy porch. And so I've gone ahead and gara around the rows. And you can see I have one, two, three more gara. So it's a whole ribbon. But these three bloomed beautifully for us last spring and then died back. Hopefully they're still alive. They should come up next spring. If not, we'll replace them because they obviously do well over here. Um, when the plants are nice, these plants were much nicer. I got them on clearance and then my cone flowers, I'm just letting die back to the ground. 
we'll cut back anything next spring for those that looks a little ratty. These lambs air we divided last year, last spring, and planted just one little itty bitty lambs ear division here and here. And they are, they're doing really well in this spot. So we'll just keep letting those take off. And then I pulled all the salvia out of here to go up around the tree. I had a whole swath of it in here. But these two plants snuck by me when I was on my cruise. By the time I came back, like even around the tree, they did okay, but they do so good over here. Like look how big and pretty this plant is. This is like two plants worth. So, I mean, we've got the cone flowers over here and we've got the gara. Any salvia that seeds itself in this bed, I'm just gonna let go. I don't care. It looks pretty. I'm not gonna fight it. We'll have more over here, obviously, next year. So this year I just kept pulling it, just kept pulling it. And I think we have enough over across the way now that they'll keep taking off. We're just going to let this be a riot of pink. Coneflowers coming up, gar coming up, salvia coming up. We're planting our, well, I will walk down here and show you. Something has seeded itself all in this bed. Still not sure what that is. That's a weed. But down here, this whole area that I'm working on, our baby milkweed is looking great. It even has a baby milkweed flower. If you caught that video, he still hasn't died back to the ground. So, I need to take care of that giant dandelion. I really need to come down here and cardboard this whole area because I got distracted. But that's a January project. I'm planning to hopefully cross my fingers, knock on wood, put in my raised beds in January, and then pea gravel and mulch this whole area so that next spring it's usable and not just cardboard wasteland. But the cardboard suppresses the weeds, so, you know, I'll take it. My one strawberry plant needs a little TLC, but it's still like, still got growth on it, so. Oh man, it still has strawberry plants. Those are new. I check this all the time. I need to come out and actually do some more because I just cut a bunch of these off last week. I wonder if those will actually mature with it being this time of year. So let's go over to this little bed. Most of this bed has gone to sleep. You can see we still have my super tunia bubble gums. They're just not blooming this time of year. They're alive, so hopefully next year they will come back. Those are usually annuals, but perennials in my zone. I had one little extra cabbage, so I put him right here. He's adorable. He's tiny. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just loved him with the little lamb's ear. And then I popped in three lamb's ears when we divided them last spring. They're not as big as the ones across the way, but they're doing great. And I just want them to grow in and fill in under this um, oak leaf hydrangea and the Laura Pedlum as kind of a ground cover. And then I'm going to keep putting annuals and flowering things around the outside so over here you can see my field of salvia i cut it all back but there's still green growth a lot of places a lot of baby plants so weed wisteria hopefully will bloom for us next year how excited would that be i see a few whips that need to be up on the tree and are not so i will probably come fix those but you don't want to do too much with that in the winter when the whips are drier and brittler. So we've got our summer crush, hydrangea, the, can't think of the name, my pen cushion flowers. They, even with all the fertilizing, they really never bloomed for us this year. So I'm hoping they're still growing, they're still here hoping with a little more love and TLC and some more fertilizer, they will bloom for us next year. Cause I would really like, these are a pretty blue pincushion flower. I would really like those right here. And then we've got, of course, the Angelonia or Veronica. I've got some foxgloves in here that have been cut back. And here is your close up 
of a ranunculus corm in its natural habitat. I am really, really hoping that these flower. But you can see I have the cotton candy pansies. Got some little kales. These are agapanthus, so they will come up in the spring. Foxglove. I'm going to plant a whole bunch of foxglove in here as well. And then pansies up in here. So I have a whole ribbon of the angelonia right around this tree. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. And there was a sixth little one right in here. So I'm missing like one or two here and one or two here. And I'm trying to decide. It's still December. We still haven't had a bunch of frost. We never get freezes here. Um, and I know with ranunculus, from what I've researched, they're best if you plant them early October, late November, somewhere in that zone. They will come up and start blooming for us in February or March, like early, early in the spring season. So my, my question is, I went insane and ordered 25 more, even with it being December, December 10th, and popped them in some of the places they're not coming up. Would it be cold enough? Would they have enough time? Would they survive? Would they just bloom a little later? Or is it too late? I don't know might be worth it but like I said these came up they were not there three four days ago even so I think I'm gonna give it three more days and then order some more if I'm still missing half of them and then if they don't come up they don't come up but I think it might be worth a shot if they don't come up because I don't want to be missing huge holes of them but this half of the garden there's not as much going on these blue pansies are like really shining right now. These kales and cabbages might be the prettiest ones in the garden. And then even some of the salvia is still here. You can see the pintas, the lamb's ear all looks pretty. You can see where the irises I've planted are still coming up. So there's not as much over here like to see, but there's lots of things to come. I planted, you saw a whole swath of ranunculus here. And look, one, two, three, four, five. Like, there's enough of a ribbon here that if no more come up, I think I'm okay with it. I love how these are coming in with all their purple and pinks and reds. Lots of foxglove, foxglove. Those I planted this year and they didn't really flower but they'll flower next year. With the biannual foxgloves, that's what you have to do. You don't get a big show the first year, but next year these will be huge and they will flower for us. These are flag iris. They always come up in the spring and are beautiful. Roses, ranunculus, 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 ranunculus. I've never grown ranunculus. This trio of box gloves, oh my God, I'm so excited for this. Like, you guys don't even know. I love fox gloves. It's my mom's favorite flower, so I am partial to them simply because she likes them. We always had them in our garden growing up, regardless of where we lived. We moved once a year, so, you know, it was the one thing she always planted. She always had fox glove. And so then right over here, right here, are my two big peony plants. And then I have peony tubers on the other side. They're marked by these little pink tags over here. There's the pink tag. So I'm gonna have to come out and start now, like I should really do it like today, putting ice on the peonies because they need them for bloom time. So I think you do that every two weeks. I'm not sure, but planted all these foxtail ferns in a video recently and you guys I love them they give like just some life to this half of the garden that was not here before this whole half of the garden especially in fall and winter just looks dead and you can see I have tried to plant begonias down here every year they never do well like I planted like 30 begonias around this tree 
and I have like two and I've had two all season. They never do well, but they're shade plants. So I always think they will. This tree is just a conundrum. It is too close to the tree for things that need a lot of water. It has too much shade for things that like a lot of sun, but not enough sun for things that even flower in the shade. So hoping that some ferns will do really well. Um, they do well on my porch where they don't get a lot of sun or a lot of water. Um, yeah, because these ferns, foxtail ferns, are not actually ferns. So while they do need water, they don't need a lot of water the way traditional ferns do. So I'm really hoping they're the perfect answer. I'm also thinking I have a pink cyclamen. I only found one that I, I have inside as an indoor house plant. And I have heard that cyclamen do well in these kind of conditions. And that in our zone, if you plant them out in the landscape in a shady spot, they'll just bloom their heads off all season. Don't know about that and they're expensive, but our, our Walmart had a whole bunch of red ones for $5. I don't do red, but I'm thinking maybe I might search a couple other Walmarts and see if I can find pink or white ones. Maybe I'll tuck some of those in around here. Maybe I won't, maybe that's just a weird idea, but either way, that's it for December. Still working on my leaf mulch. It's not a huge garden this time of year. It's never a huge garden, but you know, for my first winter plantings, I've never planted pansies or ornamental kale or ranunculus for what has coming up in spring. I am very happy with it. So I hope you like it. I will be back with a January garden tour, mosquito. Hopefully there'll be still life in the garden in January. I will see you then.